Joining me is National Senator Matt Canavan, the former Resources Minister. Matt, isn't this the absolutely predictable and absolutely dangerous consequence of this trashing we see of Australia, its history, its symbols? Exactly, Andrew. In, in fact, it's, uh, we have to re recognise that it's not a, a, uh, a, a byproduct or an unintended consequence uh, of that ideology being pushed to our children. It is, in fact, the purpose of it. The, the purpose and intent of those uh, designing our curricula, uh, talking down our country to young people, is uh, to reduce the amount of pride and patriotism that exists in this country, to undermine our, our institutions uh, as a country. And, and they are succeeding, and, but they're only succeeding because uh, we, are, we are allowing, or governments are allowing them, uh, to dictate these terms to our students, uh, through our education institutions, and we must, must push back on this because otherwise we won't have a country anymore. If people don't feel uh, like they are proud to be Australians, well, they just won't be in Australia anymore. It's only sustained by an idea uh, that uh, millions of people have shared and that idea has produced one of the most harmonious, prosperous countries in the world. I think there's one other factor, though, that I think is important, though, which we'll probably come on to, and that's are we offering a, uh, a stake in that future to young Australians? Uh, the housing market, uh, they are increasingly locked out of. Uh, I think our economy is not as strong as it used to be. So people are, are looking, do they have, are they going to be better off than their parents, which is kind of perhaps the social contract that Australia has existed on, that we always offer more and more to future generations. We've got to fix that one as well, I think, to restore pride in Australia from young Australians. Absolutely true. I must say, too, that another finding from this survey by the Australian Population Research Institute is that half the people that surveyed wanted a drastic cut to immigration. 71% said Australia does not need more people. Meanwhile, of course, we're having trouble providing a future to the ones we have already here today. Matt, uh, every day now, we get new examples of the collapse of the Albanese government's green energy revolution. You've talked about this for a long time as well. Today's example, the big investors in wind and solar factories that are popping up or supposedly around, uh, around the country, they're demanding even more government handouts. The investor group on climate change warns that the Albanese government had better get even bigger subsidies for them to match the ones in Europe and Europe, or they'll take their money out of the Australian market and put Labor's uh, Green Revolution targets at risk. Matt, this sounds like a real big uh, stick up. It is a stitch up of uh, Australian taxpayers. Uh... Um, but it's also quite revealing as well. I mean, the, the very ask of the investor group on climate change, uh, who are big backers and supporters of renewables, that they're asking for more subsidies itself undermines their own arguments, which are made separately, that renewable energy is the cheapest form of power. Because in any, any known market in the world, if you've got a business product that is the cheapest way of doing something... You don't need government subsidies to succeed. You just need to sell the product because you'll be able to undercut uh, your competitors in the existing market. You'll be able to charge a slightly higher price because you'll be able to charge your product at the price that other manufacturers have to have costs at, the high, so-called higher costs at, and you'll make massive profits and you won't, need, you won't need a subsidy at all. And so this is the case whenever there's been new inventions that are better, more efficient. You know, we haven't needed to have taxes or subsidies to Henry Ford to sell the Model T. Uh, he sold that because it was a better product that got people from A to B more cheaply and efficiently than the previous horse-drawn carriage model. He didn't need a government subsidy. He went out and sold it, and it worked. And we can see here that solar and wind is not the revolution that we are being told it is, because instead of that model, where people are rushing to buy it, people are rushing uh, to build it, they constantly and continuously need your money uh, to prop up their failed businesses. That reveals the lie about the whole renewable energy scam. It is a scam. And the sooner we end it, the, uh, the more savings we'll make as taxpayers by not having to pay these grifters more and more money. Well, you put your finger right on it about the, the con, about that claim that wind and solar is the cheapest power that is. The government says that all the time. People are wondering, how can that, how can that be if my power bills keep going up? 